What if there was an ultimate plan to imprison villains? Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues and I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. The vendor reads dramatically back to you all alterations of the panel text and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. This is Avengers Standoff. It was a massive crossover involving every Avengers book, but oddly enough, most of the crossover stories were about the other teams and what they did, and less about the overall story. So to focus on the story, we're going to be telling you what happened to Steve Rogers, Sam Wilson, Winter Soldier, and Kobik. The rest of the teams involved I'll mention when they arrive, and I'll give you a complete reading list down below if you want to see what they all did. And yes, this does lead into the current Steve Rogers storyline. For those of you who have been out of the loop, Steve Rogers had the Super Soldier Serum removed from his body and he became an elderly man before putting Falcon in the role of Captain America. Since then, he has been working for S.H.I.E.L.D. as the civilian liaison. This is Bucky Barnes, and he's relieved to be back on the planet Earth. He is the man on the wall, charged with protecting the Earth from cosmic level events, and while this typically takes him out into space, he got a few warnings that there was something going on on Earth in a top secret secret shield facility. He walks in with his stolen password that he got off of Steve Rogers, and he tells the systems to play back the event that happened there. And that's when he sees the horrible truth. They were running tests on the Cosmic Cube, and then he watches as something went horribly wrong. The cube exploded, killing everyone in the room, and in its place, a little girl stood there. Then a bunch of agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. shouted out for Bucky to freeze, and the playback stops. They hit him, and he blacks out. Recently, S.H.I.E.L.D. was accused of wanting to use the Cosmic Cube to rewrite an individual's history. It wouldn't brainwash them. They would use the cube itself to completely rewrite who that person was, their history, their appearance, and everything about them. It would create the perfect prison, one where the prisoners wouldn't even be aware that they were in a prison. Maria Hill's proposal was found out and made public, and they had to stop the plan. Or at least... That's what they told the news. Because a young man with blonde hair just woke up in an area clueless as to what was going on. He had no idea who he was or where he was, and he was found by the town sheriff, and the sheriff welcomed him to Pleasant Hill. The sheriff then brings our mystery man down to see the town's doctor, and the doctor introduces himself as Dr. Eric Slavig. He looks over the mystery man, and no one knows who he really is. He doesn't really remember anything, not even his own name. He just woke up here. The doctor, after hearing this, walked back into the hall and he began discussing what they were going to do about this man with amnesia. He's hardly the first to arrive here in this manner, and with him arriving here, that means that the program is working, but he is supposed to remember things. Something may have glitched. Hearing all of this terrifies the man, and he runs out of the room trying to get away, but he hits the ground before he gets too far, as a memory of S.H.I.E.L.D. agents blasting him comes back to him. He then wakes up on day two of this amnesia trip, in the home of Dorothy Bixby. She explains that the doctor brought him here after he fell, and she thinks that he just needs a little fresh air to clear his head. He walks around the town completely confused. Where is he? The town looks like a small town in the middle of nowhere. Perfect, happy, and no one here is worried about anything. Something isn't right and he needs to get away to figure it out. So he grabs a nearby car and he begins to drive for the exit to the town, but that's when the police begin to chase him. He drives the car off of a cliff and into a ditch, and then he gets up and he begins to run off into the forest until he hits a force field, and he sees a device with a Stark logo on it. Then the police catch up and shock him. He wakes back up in the doctor's office and he finds himself restrained, but it's only temporary. He begins seeing the town psychiatrist and the other individuals and he begins to figure out things. First off, he can't escape, and secondly, this is his home, and he can be happy here. On day 36, he was walking through the town when he saw a fire, and a woman calls out that her baby is inside, so he runs inside to save them. But when he comes back out, he realizes that someone else is inside of the building, and he runs in to find a man with a handkerchief over his face. The man tells him that he needs to know the truth of this place, which confuses our blonde-haired mystery man even further. What's the truth? He's home. But the man in the mask tells him that they can't keep him prisoner here for long, and when he's ready to learn the truth of it all, come to the basement of the bed and breakfast. So on day 40, he decides to have a look, and when he gets into the tunnel, he finds the man that started the fire once again. Our mystery blonde-haired man asks him who he really is, and he tells him, another prisoner like him. He then shows the blonde man a device, one that will remove the change that has been placed upon him, and show them who they really are. A green light pours over our two mystery men, and they change into Baron Zemo and the Fixer, and they remember everything. Now Zemo would like to know more about this cosmically powered child. So where did the Winter Soldier go? 
Well, he went to inform Steve Rogers of what had happened, that the Cosmic Cube had been broken. He then gave Steve the location where the cube had been moved to, and Steve wasn't too happy about it. He went to go see Maria Hill. Meanwhile, Falcon, currently acting as Captain America, went to go meet his contact, the Whisperer, who was actually Rick Jones. Whisperer is the one that revealed to the world Maria Hill's plans and started this rift between Steve, Falcon, and S.H.I.E.L.D. Just as the Whisperer gives Captain America the location that the cube is supposedly at, they find themselves surrounded by S.H.I.E.L.D. once again. Maria, meanwhile, has brought Steve to Pleasant Hill and introduces him to the most secure prison in the world. The individuals brought here are completely changed and turned into docile individuals. It's a perfect prison. Steve is in shock. He is the head of civilian oversight, and this breaks so many laws. He also demands that Maria let him destroy those Cosmic Cube fragments to prevent this from going even further. She brings Steve to the daycare to meet Kobik, a little girl with the powers of a god. And while Eric Slevig is explaining what's going on, that Kobik is literally rewriting reality and changing it, some of the townsfolk are getting wise to the situation. They are sneaking around and into the basement where Baron Zemo is freeing them of the changes that Kobik has made them into. Maria Hill and Steve continue to argue over the best course of action to discuss how Bucky Barnes is currently en route to kill this child, or at least that's what Maria is assuming Bucky is doing, he is the Winter Soldier, and that's when one of the residents in the town walks in demanding to speak to the mayor so he can blow up in their faces all over town people begin waking up and they realize what shield did to them imprisoned them in this place took away their history their lives their memories and as steve hits the deck dodging the explosion he calls in unity for backup one of the avengers teams and baron zemo invites it the more the merrier Meanwhile, Sam Wilson arrives at the location that the Whisperer gave to him, only to come face to face with another individual that decided to finally arrive, the Winter Soldier himself. Both begin to wonder what's going on, and they both hope that Steve can fill them in until they hear a scream nearby. They run into a school to find two individuals known as the Blood Brothers approaching an undercover S.H.I.E.L.D. agent named Avril Kincaid. The two of them knock out the Blood Brothers, and then they exchange information with Kincaid. She explains what this place was and how it's now broken. She then fills them in that in the museum is a weapon that can help them take back the city. They run across the city, beating up as many villains as they can until they get a message from a glowing little girl. She explains that she just wanted to make everyone happy and go bowling! And now he needs their help or he'll die. It doesn't take much for Cap and Bucky to figure out what she's talking about. The one who needs help is obviously Steve Rogers, and the girl is Kobik. The reason Steve needs help is because he's about to die. Because one of those villains that was here and is now normal again is Crossbones. And he throws the elderly Steve into a window and then into a wall, beating him down. And even Steve knows that this is probably the end for him. You see, after the explosion, Steve was confronted by Baron Zemo and his new crew. While Zemo could win right there, right then, right now, he wants Steve and Maria's sins to be shown to the world. He wants to reveal what S.H.I.E.L.D. did to him and the other prisoners. And he wants Maria and Steve to feel the shame of it all. So we let Steve take Maria off to get medical attention before she dies, escorted by the local Reverend. As they leave, he tells his group to find Kobik before someone else does. The Reverend escorts Steve and Maria to see Eric Slavig, and he begins treatment on Maria hill since eric was the one handling kobik before steve asks him where she could have gone and eric tells him that she loved the bowling alley and that gives steve an idea the reverend begins to bang on the door demanding to be let in stating that the doctor patient confidentiality has kind of exceeded itself at this point and that's when there's an explosion and it hits the reverend in the face the reverend walks in to find eric with maria telling him that steve rogers left but the reverend tells the doctor that it's okay that's the plan and he begins to change back into a red skull steve runs over to the bowling alley and inside he finds Kobik. He takes a knee and he asks her if she remembers him. And she calls him grumpy, explaining that she doesn't know what's going on. Everyone is bad and they aren't supposed to be. She wants everyone here to be playing. Then she alters reality to bring in all of the superheroes and villains to one spot. Right here, bowling. Steve considers the power of this, the possibilities. This girl could end every conflict in the world in one shot, but it's too dangerous. So he asks her to stop this and she holds her head down, making everyone vanish. Did she do something wrong? And Steve tells her no. Let's just play a game. She can't do anything and she's just a normal girl. But that's when someone walked in pretending to be in their disguise and it was Crossbones. This brings us back to Steve being ready to die as Crossbones beats him down into a bloody pulp. That's when the Captain America shield comes flying through the window and Crossbones catches it. He looks down at it and he thinks of how fitting it'll be to kill Steve Rogers with this. Steve, seeing his life ending, thinks about everything that he did. He thinks about the people that he loved, those that loved him in return. He thinks about the good times, what he was fighting for. He thinks about those he inspired and those that inspired him. And he realizes this is fine. He can die proud. He can die happy. He can know peace. 
But another voice speaks to him, the one that is Kobik. As a light appears before Steve, he sees her and she tells him that he doesn't have to die. He can stay if he wants. She can make him strong again. She can make him a hero again. As Crossbones winds up and he gets ready to slam the shield down on Steve's head, two hands come up catching the shield. Then, Steve stands up, pushing back Crossbones, taking the shield out of Crossbones' hands, and he smashes Crossbones' nose. Captain America and Bucky run into the bowling alley, calling out for Steve, and they're both stunned. Wow, about time. And Steve smiles back at the Winter Soldier. A young smile. Good to be back. Steve steps outside holding his old shield and Bucky and Captain America debate what this means. Does it mean that Captain America is Steve again and Falcon's going back to being Falcon? Because that would kind of suck for Falcon because he just gave the name Falcon to a new kid. Steve walks over telling Falcon that he is still Captain America. And this is his shield. He gave it up to him. The three of them will now work together to find Kobik. During the whole Crossbones mess, she ran off and they need to find her before Zemo does. After a few more apologies from Steve for not trusting Sam in our earlier adventure and not being there for Bucky when Bucky really needed him, Steve decides that maybe they shouldn't be looking for Kobik because they may not find her before Zemo does. The only way that they can guarantee a win with this is if they stop Zemo and his entire group of villains. Luckily, while they've been dealing with the town, dealing with Kobik and Steve de-aging, a good chunk of other Avengers teams have arrived and had adventures of their own. And now, they're all standing in front of Steve. Spider-Man, Thor, Vision, Nova, Miss Marvel, Iron Man, Deadpool, Cable, Rogue, Quicksilver, and Johnny Storm are ready to fight Zemo and end this. So where did Kobik end up? Well, she ran off into the forest and eventually ran into Kraven the Hunter because he was tracking her with the ultimate trap for a child. A birthday party! And elsewhere, Agent Kincaid runs into another individual undercover in this town. An individual going by the name Wendell Vaughn. And he would like Kincaid to take the Quantum Bands. But back with our Avengers teams, Steve points towards Zemo's troops and he announces, Avengers, assemble! Everyone runs into battle and they tear down a wall during one of Zemo's rants in his speeches and he brandishes a sword at them, pointing at Steve and his army. All of the villains and the heroes begin to battle it out. Powers, tools, gadgets going off all over the place. But Steve sees Kobik in the middle of the room, and he shouts for his team to go get Kobik before Zemo can use her. That's when Kincaid arrives, brandishing the quantum bands, which makes her the new Quasar. And she blasts the cube in an attempt to break it. But she didn't. She just made Kobik mad. With all the fighting going on around her and no one being here to play with her and everyone trying to use her, Kobik has had enough. And she grows to a giant size, shouting, that was very mean. Iron Man looks at her and simply says, oh hell, angry baby, giant angry baby. I was just trying to make you all happy and you tried to hurt me. And the first thing that she does is grab the Winter Soldier and throw him out of the building. Steve shouts out, Bucky! But Kobik informs him that Bucky is fine. She doesn't kill people. Then pointing at Zemo, she says, Unlike him, I'm sick of all of you. Go away, she shouts. And she begins to teleport everyone away. Zemo reappears 11,000 miles away in the Himalayas. And he lets out a sigh. I was never good with children. Then Kobik teleports herself away, leaving the remaining villains to fight every Avengers team. Then, one of the greatest Avengers battle ever happens as all of the Avengers fought against a good chunk of the villains. Epicness happened that day. Maria Hill was reprimanded. She didn't lose her rank or her position because she fought against the people in charge, telling them that none of them would have done what she did. And she is here to prevent the worst from happening, even if it means doing things behind everyone's back. And she worked it out with the Avengers groups to keep what happened secret. Steve also found his old friend Rick Jones, offering him a new job. And the original Quasar went on to train the new Quasar. And Bucky Barnes, well, Kobik liked him. She wanted to stay with him and the other people that she brought along with her that she liked. The only real problem is Red Skull escaped because he wanted to restart Hydra. And that brings us to the conclusion of Avengers Standoff. Now there is a lot that happened that we had to skim down to give you the bare bones story. So don't forget to check out all of the tie-ins yourself. Groups like Unity involving Deadpool and Rogue, they had their own adventures going on. They all knew all different Avengers. They had their own adventures going on. Everyone had issues happening in the town of Pleasant Hill. And if you're wondering, the events in this directly relate to what happened to Steve Rogers and why he said the words Hail Hydra. I made a video explaining what happened with that, but eventually we'll cover the actual storyline here on the channel. I hope you guys enjoyed and don't forget to check out our manga channel, Manga Storian, where we bring you new videos every Monday and Friday. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Comic Storian and Instagram at Comic Storian. And I'll see you guys next time right here.